Hi, I'm Sharon Bill. Welcome to my Theory Tuition series where we're working together through each of the ABRSM theory grades. There are lots of resources available to help you if you go to my website. If you go to SharonBill.com, you'll find some free PDF information sheets and you can download these in US letter or A4 and they accompany each step of this series. You'll find a page there with links to all of my YouTube video tutorials and you can also find out about the books that I have available. I've written an exam technique guide, how to take your ABRSM Music Theory exam. It's full of tips and hints on how to best prepare for your exam and also how to make the best use of your time come exam day when you're actually working through your exam paper. So if you visit SharonBill.com you'll find it all there. If you can give me a like that would be really super and please do subscribe and share. And now we're going to make a start on the 2018 practice papers for grade 3. And we're going to start with paper A. So if you turn with me to page 3, we'll have a look at that. So this paper was the grade 3 paper that was sat in the first exam session of 2018. And so this was the start of the newly revised uh, layout of the exam paper. So we can see exactly what your new paper will look like. So then... I always suggest that you uh, work through this on your own. First of all, it's much better to learn by your mistakes. Don't worry if you go wrong, always write in pencil. So have a nice sharp pencil. I use a mechanical pencil just to keep things neat and tidy because we need to make sure our answers are neat and clear so we don't risk losing any marks. Have an eraser to hand and also a ruler just to keep things neat and tidy. And so I'm hoping you've had a go of this and now we're going to work through question one together. So question one asks us to add the missing bar lines to each of these three melodies. So there are three separate time signatures, don't just presume there's a continuation. Um, they all begin on the first beat of the bar, but here this etc means that the last bar won't be complete, it just finishes mid bar. So you can't work backwards um, because this last bar won't be complete. So then, let's have a look at this first one. So we're counting three beats in a bar and each beat is worth a minim or a half note. So whatever adds up to the equivalent of three minim beats, three half notes per bar. So here we have a dotted crotchet, which is three quarters of a minim or a half note. And then combined with this quaver, that gives us a minim beat. If you find that difficult to work it out, work in crotchet beats first of all. So here's one and a half crotchet beats and then a half of a crotchet beat or quarter note gives us two beats which is the equivalent of a minim or a half note. So you could work it that way. So we can see we have a crotchet crotchet or quarter note quarter note which combined gives us a minim or a half note. And then again we have one and a half crotchet beats here and these two semiquavers, these two sixteenth notes are the equivalent of a quaver so we've got the same amount of time here as well so all together that gives us our third minim beat, our third half note and so there's our first bar line there we go and so let's carry on so two quavers, two eighth notes give us a crotchet Here's another crotchet and so together that gives us our minim or half note. Same again, there's a minim or a half note. And then it's the same again but in reverse. Now we have crotchet, quaver, quaver rather than quaver, quaver, crotchet. Oh, I've got carried away. Oh, no, I haven't. One, two, three. So that's our next one. And then again, we can see we've got the same time values here. We're not concerned about the pitch at all, so it doesn't matter that it's higher. We're just looking at the note values. So there we can see we have one minim beat, one half note. And then again, we've already looked at this time value here. So we know that that gives us another minim beat or half note. And then again, we know that quaver, quaver, crotchet, eighth note, eighth note, quarter note gives us a minim beat. So there's our one two, three, there's our bar line and this last bit is incomplete so we carry on. So then now we are counting six beats in a bar but each beat is now an eighth note or a quaver beat and this is compound time so we are actually looking for 
two groups of three per bar. Sometimes it's easy to just see the whole group. So here we can see there's the whole group. However, if you want to be absolutely sure with your maths, you can see one, two, three quaver beats. There's the first half of the bar. Now then here, we have one quaver beat, an eighth note, and then half as much again, there's a 16th note or semi-quavers worth. So combined with that gives us our next quaver beat or eighth note. So there's one, two, and then these two together, two 16th notes, two semi-quavers give us a quaver or an eighth note. So one, two, three, with this group of three here, there's our six. And now here we have one and a half quaver beats, one and a half eighth notes. Here's the remaining half of that eighth note or quaver beat. So there's the second beat, there's the third. So there's one group of three. That's our first group of three. And then here, this crotchet, this quarter note divides into two quavers or two eighth notes. So one, two, three, there's our second group of three. One, two, three, four, five, six bar line. Don't forget rests count as well. So we have one, two, three. This is a quaver rest or an eighth note rest. So there's our first group of three. And then here this divides into two quavers or two eighth notes. So one, two, three. So there's our bar line. Straight away we can see we have our first group of three. This divides into three quaver beats because of the dot, one, two, and then half as much again, three. And then if we just look at these two semis, two sixteenth notes gives us one quaver beat, or one eighth note, there's two, there's three. So one, two, three, four, five, six, there's our bar line. And this last bar is incomplete. So just be careful with your maths and just take it a step at a time and by all means diagram it out just to help you with your counting. Let's look at this next one. So this time signature here, this is common time, which is another way of showing 4-4. Four, four. If you remember, we first came across this in grade one, or we could say four crotchet beats per bar, four quarter notes per bar. So then, uh, here we go. So we know that four semiquavers, four sixteenth notes make a crotchet. So there's our first beat, first quarter note. Now don't get confused by the triplet, that just means three in the time of two. So two quavers worth, that gives us another crotchet beat. Now here we have three quarters of a beat and another quarter. If we just diagram that out, there's a whole beat. Let's divide that into quarters. So a quaver or an eighth note is half of a crotchet beat, that's half of a beat. The dot makes it half as long again, and then we have this semi-quaver, the sixteenth note, which is our last quarter, so we can see there's one crotchet beat, or one quarter note. So here's a quaver note, and then a quaver rest, or two eighth note, eighth rest, which gives us our last crotchet beat, one, two, three, four, bar line. It's quite a long bar, isn't it? Okay, so here we go. There we have that same scenario again. So there's one beat. And then here we can see we have two quarters of a beat and half of a beat, which gives us a full beat. And also we know that we group in crotchet beats. So you can see straight away, beat one, beat two, beat three, beat four, beat one, beat two, now here we have one beat here and then half as much again, so that's worth a quaver or an eighth note, and then these two semi-quavers, two sixteenth notes, give us the other half of that beat, so the dot and these two semi-quavers give us a beat. And then here, oh how many have we got? One, two, three, four, so that'll do for now, bar line. Now carrying on. Now here we can see straight away there's beat one, but if you want to just double check your maths, we have a dotted semiquaver followed by a demi semiquaver or a sixteenth note followed by a thirty second note. However, if you remember, an easy way of just sorting through the maths quickly, 
that makes it longer, that makes it shorter, so in actual fact they sort of cancel each other out mathematically and so what you're left with is an average of four quarters because that's been made longer, that's been made shorter so we can see that there again. If you wanted to absolutely break the maths down let's do that. So this is now a half a beat, this is a quaver so let's divide the quaver into four. So we have, here we have a semi quaver, which is worth half of a quaver beat. The dot is half of that again. And then this demi semi quaver is worth a quarter of that quaver beat. So there we've just broken that down. So there we have quaver quaver. So just another way of looking at your maths there. Altogether though, you can see straight away it's beamed as one beat, so that's a quick double check. So there's beat one. We know this already. We've already dealt with a quaver and a rest, an eighth note and an eighth note rest. So there's two halves, which gives us a crotchet beat, a quarter note. Again, just very quickly, you can see that these are beamed. There's a group. However, by all means, just check the maths. And again, just like we found here, that and that sort of cancel each other out. So we've got two quarters and a half which make a full beat. So there we go. So one, two, three, our last beat here is the same scenario again. Quaver note, quaver rest, eighth note, eighth note rest. So one, two, three, four, and bar line. And then this last bar is not complete, so we just leave that. So quite a lot of adding up there, but just take it a stage at a time and you soon get there. And by all means, just diagram it out. You can always just rub out these little bits and bobs afterwards. Let's press on to the next question. So now we're asked to regroup these notes here because this is desperately difficult for the performer to read. We need to group these, we need to beam these correctly. And the way we do that is we have to reflect each crotchet or quarter note beat. So we can show our thinking straight away before we even get uh, bothered with writing on the stave. So here we know we have a half a beat and two quarters of a beat. That makes one. So we know they're going to have to go together. We have three quarters of a beat and a quarter of a beat. So we know that's there as well. If you want to just look at that, we can see a beat. Divide it into quarters so we can see a half and two quarters. Here we can see there's a half a beat with the quaver or the eighth note. The dot after it makes it half as long again and then here's the remaining quarter of a beat. So we can see there's a beat there. So we know they're going to have to be beamed together. Now here we have a quarter, a half and a quarter. So all together they make a whole beat. Bear in mind, each beat is a quarter note or a crotchet beat. That, of course, stays as it is. Now, first of all, here you'd think a half and a half, a half and a half, give us two separate beats. But if you remember, right back in grade one, we were told that we can actually beam all of those together. So we could just put all of those together in one beam. The only time you can't do that is in a bar of 4-4 four, four when you go over the middle of the bar line. But this isn't the case here, so we can just uh, beam all of those together. When it's a mixture of quavers and semi-quavers, eighth notes and sixteenth notes, we have to show each individual quarter note or crotchet beat. Now then here, we have a half a beat here, and then here it gets a little bit tricky, the maths does. So we'll come back to this in a moment, but if you get really, really stuck here, what you can do is just work backwards. I think a half and a half gives us one beat. And so here's our remaining second beat. Now let's look at this half of a beat here. So this is the equivalent of a quaver that we're looking at. I'm gonna break that down into quarters. So each one of these is a demi-semi quaver. So we have a semi quaver here, which is a half of this quaver. So a sixteenth note is half of an eighth note. The dot makes it half as long again. And then this demi semi quaver, this 
32nd note fills in the remaining part of that beat just to help you divide your maths down there. Let's press on. So here we have two quarters of a beat and a half of a beat that gives us a whole and then here we have a half and two quarters that gives us a whole so they'll have to be beamed together and then of course this stands alone this is just a dotted quarter note a dotted crotchet so actually you've done all of the thinking for this now we may just have to make some decisions onto which uh, way the stems will go but that's the hard work done so what I'm going to do I'm just going to get these note heads in place just so I haven't got to worry about uh, where I am in the bar and have I got enough room in the bar and just getting everything properly spaced and I'm keeping my notes aligned with theirs for one reason so I don't get lost and also just so I know that it's going to be properly spaced and my bar is going to properly fill out not get too squished or run out of space it's also really to do with making sure I can tell where I'm going got enough to be thinking about without losing track on which note I'm on so just get the blobs in place and then I can worry about the stems afterwards nearly there you can do it in any order you like really this is just the way I prefer to work just dealing with one thing at a time why make it harder when it can just be simple steps there we go so we know these are going to be joined together they're all below the middle line so these can all just have the stems going up by all means use a ruler so this is the same note this can go either way they've gone down so I'll keep it that way so these can be beamed together just make that dot a bit more obvious so again these are all stems down because that can go either way these must come down and because I'm beginning and ending on the same note I'm just going to keep that level now I can't put the line all the way through otherwise that would make that into a semiquaver or a 16th note so I just put little lines showing that So these can all come down actually because these are above the middle line so these come down, this can come either way. So I'm going to do my outside notes first, get a general downwards direction to show the pitch is descending. Now then the stems have flipped up here, these can all go up because they're all below the middle line and again I'm beginning and ending in the same place so that will be level. So I need two lines to begin with and then just this one is the demi semi or the 32nd note. Now this one must go up, this one can go either way so I'm going to change this stem so that they can both join together. There we go. Now all of these can have the stems coming up because they're all below the middle line. I think I'll use a ruler here find it easier angling upwards than down, don't know why, perhaps it's because I'm right handed oops there are the semi quavers so uh, this stem must go up, these can go either way so we'll have all of these going up I probably should have used a ruler there more haste, less speed as my gran used to say So these last two are semi-quavers or 16th notes, so we need another beam there. And then, uh, and don't forget the rest, I should have done that really. There we go, so that's all that completed. So we've just got this last little section to answer here. How many demi-semi-quavers or 32nd notes is this last note worth? So we have a dotted crotchet, a dotted quarter note. So first of all, I'm going to just diagram out how many demi-semi-quavers or 32nd notes there are in this crotchet or quarter note. So, a crotchet or a quarter note divides into two quavers, two eighth notes. And if we divide again, that gives us four semi-quavers or four sixteenth notes. And then if we diagram again, we can see we double to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So 
So there are our demi semi quavers or 30 second notes. Now that's only the crotchet, so we need to do half as much again, so eight, and then for the dot, half as much again, so half of eight is four, eight plus four equals 12. So there, that's that one completed. I do hope that's helpful to you. If you can give me a like, that would be fab. And please do subscribe to my channel to keep updated. We'll continue with the next question in the next video. I hope this is helpful to you in your studies. I hope it's helping you to get to grips with this topic. Please do visit SharonBill.com and have a browse around all of the resource and information that's available to help you there. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.